So I wanted to show you this website. It's on our TCAP review website. And it's basically just an animation about what really goes on in photosynthesis. I remember when I was growing up and the teachers would teach about photosynthesis. I would memorize the things plants needed and what it made, but never really understood it. And when I saw this animation, it really clicked a little better for me in my mind, made me understand a little bit better what's going on. So this isn't going to be on TCAP, but it will really help you visualize in your mind what's happening in photosynthesis. We're going to go through it a couple of times, so don't worry if you don't catch on to it right away. So, you know that plants need sunlight and water and carbon dioxide gas in order to make their food. So let's look at how this happens. So, when plants take in water through their roots, that water gets stored inside the plant. You also know that when the sun's shining, plants absorb that sunlight in their chloroplast with that chemical chlorophyll that's stored inside the chloroplast. It acts like a sunlight sponge. And it uses the energy that it received from the sunlight to break apart the water. So you can see here all these water molecules, H2O, two hydrogens, and an oxygen. And so it uses the energy that was stored in the chloroplasts from the sunlight and it breaks these bonds in the water breaks them apart. Now notice that when that happens those hydrogens and oxygen were pulled apart. Did you see what those oxygens did? I'm going to replay that. The oxygens joined to each other and they went out of the plant. One of the things we know that photosynthesis makes is oxygen and the way it gets that is when it takes the sunlight and breaks apart the hydrogens and oxygen uh, in the water and those oxygens join to each other and then they leave through the openings in the leaves and go back into the atmosphere and that's how we get our oxygen. Remember that oxygen likes to combine with things and so they're happy to combine with each other. Which leaves all these leftover hydrogens. Now remember we also have CO2 or carbon dioxide in the plant. And so you can see that we've got all these extra hydrogens and the carbon dioxide. And what happens is some of those hydrogens pull one of the oxygens off the carbon dioxide. And look what it made, two hydrogen and oxygen. It made water. And so if the plant has enough water, it'll release this water in the form of water vapor back into the atmosphere and help to contribute with our water cycle. If it needs the water, then it'll store it or use it. And then everything else that's left behind combines together to form that glucose. And now this glucose molecule, the arrangement of it isn't accidental. Glucose always forms in this arrangement. Remember we said glucose is C6H12O6. Look, six C's, one, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and six oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let me replay that. So when the water leaves, the remaining elements join together to form that one molecule of glucose. Now let's go back and look at it one more time. So the plant takes in water. It also absorbs sunlight. It uses the energy from the sunlight to break these water molecules apart. The oxygens, when they're pulled away from the hydrogens, go into the atmosphere. That's how we get our oxygen. And then all these leftover hydrogens combine, actually not combine, some of the hydrogens pull, strip away the, one of the oxygens from the CO2, the carbon dioxide. And that forms water. The plant will use it, or if it doesn't need it, it will release it back into the atmosphere. And then everything else that's left over combines to form glucose, the sugar that plants need.